Chapter 11, The Popcorn Blizzard. When Paul Bunyan had cut down all the trees in North Dakota, he decided to go west. It was summertime and the forest was sweet with the smell of green trees. The spreading branches cast their cool shadows on the ground. We must cross vast plains, said Paul to his men, where it is so hot that not even a blade of grass can grow. You must not become too thirsty. There will be very little water to drink. Paul knew it would be a long, hard journey, so he decided to send all of the heavy camp equipment by boat down the Mississippi River and around the Horn to the Pacific Ocean. That means going all the way around South America. Paul told Billy Whiskers, a little bald-headed logger with a bushy beard, to take a crew of men and build a boat. Billy had once been a sailor. In a short time, the boat was finished and loaded with all the heavy camp tools. Everyone cheered as Billy Whiskers and his men started down the Mississippi River on their long trip. Billy wore an admiral's hat and looked every inch the sailor, although he hadn't been on board a ship for 35 years. With Paul and Babe, the blue ox, leading the way, the rest of the camp then started across the plains on their long journey west. In a few days, they had left the woods and were knee-deep in sand that stretched out before them for miles and miles. The sun became hotter and hotter. I made some vanilla ice cream, said Hot Biscuit Slim, one day as he gave the men their lunch. But the ice cream became so hot under the boiling sun that I couldn't touch it. Tiny Tim, the water boy, was so hot and tired that Paul had to put him on, his, on Babe's back where he rode the rest of the trip. Every time Babe took a step forward, he moved ahead two miles, and Tiny Tim had to hold on with all his might. Even Ole the Big Swede, who was so strong he could carry a full-grown horse under each arm, began to tire. There was not a tree in sight. Paul Bunyan's men had never before been away from the forest. They missed the cool shade of the tree, Whenever Paul stopped to rest, 30 or 40 men would stand in his shadow to escape the boiling sun. I won't be able to last another day, cried Brimstone Bill, if it doesn't begin to cool off soon. Even Paul became Paul Bunyan became tired finally and took his heavy double-bitted axe from his shoulder and dragged it behind him as he walked. The huge axe cut a ragged ditch through the sand that had been seen to this day. It is now called the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River runs through it. It became so hot that the men were exhausted and refused to go another step. Hot Biscuit Slim had complained that there was very little food left in camp. That night, Paul took Babe the Blue Ox and went on along into the mountains to the north. In the mountains, Paul found a farmer with a barn full of corn. I will buy your corn, said Paul to the farmer. So he loaded all the corn on Babe's back and started for camp. By the time he arrived there, the sun was shining again and the day grew hotter and the sun rose overhead. Soon it became so hot that the corn started to pop popping. It shot up into the air in vast clouds of white puffy popcorn. It kept popping and popping, and soon the air was filled with wonderful white popcorn. It came down all over the camp and almost covered the kitchen. The crown became white with popcorn as far as the eye could see. It fell like snow until everything was covered two feet deep with fluffy popcorn. A snowstorm, a snowstorm, cried the men as they saw it falling. Never had they seen anything like it before. Some ran into the bunkhouse and put on their mittens, and others put on heavy overcoats and woolen caps. They clapped each other on the back and laughed and shouted for joy. Let's make snowshoes, cried Ole the Big Swede. So they all made snowshoes and waded around in the white popcorn and threw popcorn snowballs at each other. And everyone forgot how hot it had been the day before. Even the horses thought it was real snow, and some of them almost froze to death before the men could put woolen blankets on them and lead them to the shelter. 
Babe, the blue ox, knew it was only popcorn and winked at Paul. Paul Bunyan chuckled to himself at the popcorn blizzard and decided to start west again while the men were feeling so happy. He found them all huddled around the kitchen fire. Now it was time to move west, said Paul, before it begins to get hot again. So they packed up and started. The men waded through the popcorn and blew on their hands to keep them warm. Some claimed their feet were frostbitten and others rubbed their ears to keep them from freezing. Mm -hmm. Easily confused and persuaded. Be careful on that. After traveling for a few weeks more, they saw ahead of them the great forest that had set out. they had set out to reach. They cheered Paul Bunyan, who led them safely over the hot desert plains. Babe, the blue ox, laughed and winked at Paul whenever anyone mentioned the great blizzard. After reaching the great forest in the Rocky Mountains, Paul set, sent Brimstone Bill and Babe on the Pacific coast to meet Billy Whiskers and help unload the boat. They finally found the ship outside the entrance to the Golden Gate. What's the matter? shouted Brimstone Bill. Why don't you come into shore? I can't, cried Billy Whiskers through a large megaphone. My ship is stuck fast to the bottom of the ocean. That seemed very strange to Brimstone Bill, for the water was almost a mile deep out in the ocean beyond the Golden Gate. Billy Whiskers rowed ashore and explained, and it seems they had made a mistake when they built the ship. The men used new green lumber that quickly became water soaked and the boat started sinking. As soon as the water came up to the edge of the deck, Billy Whiskers, uh, sorry about that, Billy Whiskers would put in to shore and build another deck on top of the first deck. When that became water soaked, he would build still another deck on top of that. When he finally arrived at the Golden Gate, he found he had 137 decks on his ship and all but one of them was underwater. Of course, with a boat like that, they couldn't go through the Golden Gate and all the cargo had to be put onto rafts and floated ashore. There they loaded everything on and the big blue ox and there they loaded everything on the big blue ox and were soon back in Paul Bunyan's camp in the Rocky Mountains. What's the matter? shouted Brimstone Bill. Why don't you come to shore? Oh my goodness, I read that already. We're on to chapter 12. Let's keep going. The mountain that stood on its head. When Billy Whiskers and his men arrived, Paul Bunyan decided to move further into the mountains. The men wanted to stop and cut the large trees. No, said Paul, for he had heard of wonderful white pine forests that only Indians had ever seen. Many strange sights they saw as they pushed on through the mountains. There were shovel-tailed beavers that built dams in the streams. Their tails were shaped like shovels and they could build a dam in a few minutes. Hot Biscuit Slim caught six of them and used the beavers to dig holes near the kitchen to bury the prune stones that were left after breakfast. They saw stiff-legged deer with no joints in their legs. These strange animals could not lie down. They slept standing on their feet, leaning against a tree. They caught several of these by sawing some of the trees almost in two. When the deer would lean against them, the tree would topple over, and so would the deer. Naturally, the deer couldn't get up and were easily captured. Brimstone Bill caught a side-hill goat. This, un you, this animal is probably the rarest of all mountain goats. The legs on one side are much shorter than the legs on the other side. He's, he travels around the steep hills of the mountains as if he were on level ground. Brimstone Bill made a pet of his side hill goat, and he never got lost or ran away from camp. Because of the short legs on one side, he always ran around in a circle when on level ground. The men also found some sun dodgers. These strange birds lay their eggs on the shady side of the mountain. The eggs, instead of being round, are square, so they won't roll down the steep mountainsides. In the center of the wilderness, they came upon the strangest sight they had ever seen. A huge mountain appeared before them, but the peak, instead of being in the clouds, was 
on the ground. The base of the mountain became wider as it left the ground. Went up like that. Like a huge ice cream cone. The mountain that stood on its head, cried Paul, as he saw the vast forest of white pines growing down toward the earth from the sides of the mountain. The Indians told me of it, but said no one could cut the trees because they were growing upside down. This didn't stop Paul Bunyan, however. He immediately built a camp under the edge of the mountain. Then he called Johnny Slinger to him. Here is a new problem for you. How are we going to log off the white pine trees that are growing upside down from the sides of the mountain? Johnny Inkslinger took off his glasses and thought and thought. He thought of 69 different ways of cutting down the trees, but none of them would work. Finally, he had Ole the Big Swede build a great cannon, and he loaded it with gunpowder and heavy iron cannonballs. When it was ready, the men shot the cannonballs through the trunks of the trees and they dropped upside down on the ground with a loud crash. But the tops of the trees were pointed like arrows and they plunged into the earth and disappeared from sight. Paul finally had to give up that plan. They worked all summer long without being able to get a single log. Paul was in despair. No task was too large or difficult for Paul and his men but they were defeated so far by the mountain that stood on its head. It was Tiny Tim, the water boy, who finally thought of a way. Why not lasso the trees with a rope like the cowboys do, said Tim, who had, who had read cowboy stories. Paul combed his beard with a large pine tree as he sat thinking about what Tiny Tim had said. Not a bad idea, said Paul. So they sent sent to Montana for some cowboys who arrived at the camp with their long lariats. The lariats were rope, ropes the cowboys used to lasso cows and horses. In a short time, the air was full of swinging ropes as the cowboys looped them around the tops of the trees. They tied the lariats to Babe the Blue Ox and Babe pulled the trees out by the roots. Then the cowboys climbed the mountain, hanging up hanging to the upside down trees by their knees like monkeys and lassoed other trees. In a month, Paul had logged all the white pine trees off the side of the mountain. The weight of the trees on the other side caused the mountain to fall over on its side with a great crash that could be heard for miles and miles. The force of the mountains falling started a huge tidal wave in the Pacific Ocean which destroyed 60 fishing villages in Japan. That is why the geographies no longer show the strange mountain that stood on its head. Now, we had a couple examples in our tall tale today of the way things were made, which were untrue. But be ready to um, share some of those in your Google form today, because that also is a characteristic of a tall tale.